Coming up this morning on Fox 44 First Edition Primetime Clash, the president takes his border wall pitch to the American people this morning reaction to what he had to say. And showing support, what parish leaders are saying is vital to solving mental health concerns around the capital city. And who that hype? The black and gold buzz ahead of the Saints playoff game this weekend. What you need to know about the game and tickets. Live, you're watching Fox 44 First Edition. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Fox 44 First Edition. I'm Carly Lane. And I'm Jaron Jordan. It was a primetime showdown last night as President Donald Trump brought his border wall pitch straight into your living rooms. That's right. Still, not everyone is backing the idea as the government shutdown rages through its third week. Maureen Raffi has reaction to the president's speech. As part of an overall approach to border security, law enforcement professionals have requested $5.7 billion for a physical barrier. This barrier is absolutely critical to border security. Reactions are pouring in following President Trump's first Oval Office address to the country, where he made a public plea for the border wall. Some Republican leaders backing him in the battle over border funding. This is the most presidential I've seen President Trump. It was compelling and everything he said was true. All the president's saying is I'd like to provide more security to the American people. It is a crisis. But the opposition is standing firm. It is an emergency and a crisis that he himself has created. Mr. President, we don't need to create artificial crises. We have enough real crises. Let us end this shutdown and bring the American people together. And politicians weren't the only ones weighing in. Migrants south of the border also commented on the president's message. I hope his heart softens up to give us a chance because we're not going there to steal from him. We want to work to help to continue building the country with our effort. We help to improve the economy. We don't worsen it, it improves. I hope they don't give him the money he's asking for to build the wall. President Trump is expected to take a trip to the border on Thursday. In Los Angeles, Marianne Rafferty, Fox News. Well, as that shutdown continues, a group of senators are urging the president to back off a planned pay freeze for federal employees. Randy Irwin from the National Federation of Federal Employees says the freeze not on hurts federal workers' wallets, but impacts the ability of the government to recruit and retain talent. Well, get this, one local restaurant is chipping in to help workers affected by the shutdown. The Ruby Slipper Cafe is now offering free meals to all government employees and their families affected by the shutdown. Officials with restaurants say all you have to do is show your government-issued identification. And in our Fox 44 feedback question this morning, we're asking this question. Do you agree that with President Trump that the United States is facing a national security crisis? Why or why not? You can sound off at any time. Just head to Facebook and find this post by searching for WGMB Fox 44. Leave your comment on this post and you could see your response pop up right here on Fox 44 First Edition. Well, a new report out this morning shows that nearly half of the households in Baton Rouge area struggle to afford the basic necessities. The Alice report from the Louisiana Association of United Ways shows 45% of households in the capital area live in poverty. The report includes measures based on present day income levels and expenses that show how many Louisiana workers are struggling financially and why. Well, making the grade this morning, there are some fresh new faces on the East Baton Rouge School Board this morning as newly elected members were sworn in. Fox 44's T.C. Muzinga shares their goals moving forward. There were several things I saw that were not going in the right direction that I thought they should go. Now Darius Lanis can make some changes as he becomes a member of the East Baton Rouge School Board. This will be his first term. It was just time for a change in my community, and I think my community spoke out. Uh, on election day and I'm more excited more than excited to be representing them and it's personal for him. He grew up in the area and was tired of seeing schools not improving. He represents District 2. More specifically with Glen Oaks High School. I saw the condition that the school was in and I thought it was time to speak out and get more people involved that attended the school. Now that he's sworn in, Lena says he's ready to get to work and marks several items off his agenda, like giving out scholarships to students and creating community advisory committees. 
in the Constitution of law. Teacher pay is another hot topic for him, and he says that's one of the first things he'll bring up in every meeting. Many Louisiana teachers say they haven't seen a raise in 10 years. But I can tell my teachers this, and I can assure them I am going to work tooth and nail to make sure that we find the pay that they so rightfully deserve. For Fox 44 News, I'm T.C. Muzinga. Tizia, thank you. Well, mental health continues to be a heavy topic here in the capital city, especially when you consider the treatment or lack of treatment available. But the at the Ronald Reagan luncheon, East Baton Rouge coroner Dr. Bo Clark spoke on the importance of awareness and making sure that you do everything you can to find the right resources to treat it. There's a lot of recidivism in mental health, uh, and that's one of the key components to how you treat mental health better is if you have somebody that's continually in and out of the system, especially the corner system involuntarily, uh, that's a person who if they had a caseworker might not be in and out of the system so often, meaning they have somebody to follow their case so that they're taking their medications, going to their appointments on a regular basis. Now, Dr. Clark says the approved bridge center tax will help build up services to provide proper treatment for those who need it. Well, it may be carnival season, but it's sort of taking a backseat right now. The talk of the town is still the black and gold as the Saints officially begin their postseason march to the Super Bowl this weekend. The Saints host the defending Super Bowl champions, the Philadelphia Eagles, on Sunday. The Saints dominated a regular season matchup between the two teams, and fans are hoping we see much more of the same this weekend. The energy is crazy because, you know, I have relatives that are huge Eagles fans, and you know, I just had to let them know that, I mean, sorry to say, you know, look at the draw, you y'all got put up against the wrong team. Now, if you want a ticket, it will cost you. The cheapest tickets that we've been able to find so far are going for around 200 bucks right now. Of course, you can always just stay home and watch the game. Kickoff is at 340 Sunday afternoon right here on Fox 44. Well, with those steep ticket prices on social media, we want to hear how you're going to watch the game. So we're asking, are you willing to pay a lot of money to see the Saints on Sunday, or would you prefer to stay at home and watch the game. Let us know how you're going to be enjoying the Saints game this weekend. Head on over to our Facebook page, WGMB Fox 44. Find this post, leave your comments, and they could pop up during our newscast. Well, still ahead on Fox 44 First Edition Life Saving Watch Why One Man is Crediting Wearable Technology with Keeping Him Alive. And back to normal, how one California high school is getting back on track after those devastating wildfires last year. Kevin. And let's now take a look at what's happening along I-12 here at Sherwood Forest. Some good news, the west and eastbound lanes are A-OK. -okay. Meanwhile, for us, good day sunshine. Many of you probably like that Beatles hit, but we're going to all come together with the weather forecast in two and two. Stay tuned.
Welcome back everyone. We began with the dew points. Now the cold front we had yesterday evening into early this morning, bringing in some much needed dry air. You see the dew points currently 32 new roads, 36 into Baton Rouge. That was spelled for a very chilly night on tap. Temperatures out the door right now. Make sure you have to take the jacket with 50 degrees, 48 into new roads, and you see at least uh, Kenwood red 40. 8 degrees, a little bit regionally wise, a little bit colder, at least a 45 in the Shreveport, even drop below the freezing mark in Oklahoma City. And once again, that cold air moving our way due to high pressure. So sunshine ahead, seasonable temperatures. We're talking about highs into the upper 50s, the lower 60s, and some chilly nights are in store with readings dropping into the 30s. We see on the water vapor satellite imagery, there's your dry air that's pushing in from the northwest. And then uh, further beyond that, we have that comma shape. That's our next storm system arriving for the weekend. And and another storm system that will arrive for the middle of next week. Let's spell it in the forecast. Say thankful to the H there. You see they'll be pushing in from the west and northwest leading tonight's conditions not only today but tomorrow. And you see the white clouds there that will start to move in on your Wednesday. Set us up for some rain chances So local highs today. A new roads around 55 degrees, 57 in the Hammond. Gonzalez were at 61 and 61 degrees and to Donaldsonville Metro forecast were at 60. Dew points will drop into the 30s and this evening we're at 35 degrees with dew points once again back into the 30s. So the seven day forecast, there's your cold front arriving. 70% rain chances on Saturday and then temperatures start to slide back into the 50s. Overnight lows will drop back into the 30s. Once again, the Mississippi River Flood stage, at least a crest at 38 feet as we move towards Sunday, but the levees, thankfully, are at 47 feet. Let's take a look at that traffic issue that's happening along Interstate 10. And you see this is at Bluff Road, and you see the delays. This is causing about a five-minute delay. Use US 61 as an alternative route. This traffic check is sponsored by the Murphy Law Firm. So this is day two of the same area along I-10. Back to you. All right, Kevin, thank you. Well, students at a high school ravaged by wildfire in California say it feels good to be back in a normal routine after they started classes this week. That's right. Paradise High School students were given Paradise Strong wristbands on their first day of classes inside a 30,000 square foot temporary building. Now, that two story building used to house Facebook headquarters, but is now being transformed to let teachers and students get back on schedule. This is an unprecedented event, so we're figuring out how to put walls up. We're figuring out how to accommodate everybody's needs. School officials aren't sure if their normal building will be ready for the start of next school year, but say they are trying to hold a graduation ceremony at the school's football field later this year. Great to see them back to school. All right, still ahead on Fox 44 First Edition Marvel Mania, a look at the new trailer for Marvel's first ever female-led film. And why one man says wearing a watch ended up saving his life. We'll have that story for you next on Fox 44 First Edition. We'll be right back.
You're watching Fox 44 News First Edition with Carly Lane, Jaron Jordan, and meteorologist Kevin Smith. Welcome back. We all know that smart technology is becoming more common in our everyday lives. Sure, you can track steps, read messages, and even play music. But wearable tech can also help save your life. Sharice LeClerc has a story of one man who credits his Apple Watch for detecting an irregular heartbeat. You just put your finger here. Barry Maiden is a self-described tech geek. It's part of why he wanted to buy himself this Apple Watch, but he also keeps a close eye on his health after suffering from a brain injury. He originally got it because they have a new fall risk um, app, right? Yeah. Where if he were to fall and I'm not nearby, the fall sensor will sense that he fall and then call 911. But in this case, it actually ended up detecting something that Barry didn't even have on his radar. And it said, you looks like your heart is an AFib, you should contact your doctor. AFib, or atrial fibrillation, is an irregular heartbeat that, if left untreated, or in Barry's case, undetected, could lead to blood clots, causing a stroke or other heart complications. The watch showing Barry and his wife Tara what his actual heartbeat looked like, he finally decided to go to the hospital. When I got to the ER, they did an, e an actual EKG on a cart with the, the, the real deal. Sure enough, the medical professionals told Barry the same thing. He was in AFib. It would probably have taken me longer to get to the doctors had I not had something actually telling me that something's not right. He was sedated. His heart essentially stopped and restarted by doctors. Now this small piece of technology suddenly seems like so much more to them. Instead of being just kind of a, a toy or a tchotchke, I think I'll probably pay closer attention to it. Just Grateful, blessed. Well, up next, 2019 is setting up to be a huge year for Marvel. A fresh look at their ex what's expected to be their first blockbuster. That's next on Fox 44 First Edition. We'll be right back.
Welcome back everyone from Marvel's first ever female led movie to a popular actor and director being honored by his peers. David Daniel takes a look at what's making news in Hollywood this morning. Take a look. It's a photon blast. Here's the latest look at Captain Marvel as the superhero played by Brie Larson shows off more of her unearthly powers. Samuel L. Jackson and Jude Law co-star in the movie, which blasts into theaters March 8th. The way I see it, we can do whatever we want. Venom made $855 million worldwide, so you know what that means. Let's say it together. They're making a sequel. Variety reports Sony has hired one of the screenwriters on the comic book flick to write and executive produce the follow-up, and star Tom Hardy is set to return. She has a whole other take. Award-winning actor, writer, and director Alan Alda is receiving this year's SAG Life Achievement Award, and set to present it is another renowned Hollywood hyphenate. Tom Hanks, who co-starred with Alda in Bridge of Spies, will honor him January 27th at the 25th annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. Two silver fox for a silver anniversary. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Pretty cool. I'm still excited to see Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers in that biopic, which is, I think, expected later this year. Pretty exciting. Yeah, that is, that's going to be good. Tom Hanks is awesome. Mm -hmm. Silver Fox now. Hard to believe. I know. <laughs> Silver Fox. <laughs> well, coming up next, Tyler Strong. How one university honored a young football super fan who passed away after a fight with cancer. That story next, right here on Fox 44 First Edition. Okay, everyone, we still have an issue that's happening along the eastbound lanes of I-10 at Bayou Manchac. We have a vehicle that stalled in the left lane causing a five to a 10 minute delay 
use US-61. Here we go again. All right, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Well, he made national headlines last year with his dedication to Purdue football despite his fight against a rare form of cancer. Tyler Trent was laid to rest yesterday in Michigan State basketball honor the young man before their game against Purdue. The players, coaches, and MSU students created a Tyler Strong banner that was displayed in the student section last night before tip-off. Trent garnered national attention from the likes of ESPN for his love of Purdue and his positive attitude. He passed away on New Year's Day at the age of 20. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, sad story, but you know, better place. There you go. Before we go, today is National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day, and that's why we're going to support the blue on this Wednesday morning. So if you see a law enforcement officer out there, we're going to say thank you. There you go. <laughs> and thank you for watching Fox 44 First Edition. Uh, join Chad Savvy and Lauren McCoy right back here for Fox 44 News at 530. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.